All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and this is going to be build update number three on my Team Durango DETC410. This is their one-tenth scale touring car. Now, I've been at it for approximately, uh, like, about six hours now. Each build video was about two hours uh, of work time each. Now, uh, keep in mind that that is approximate and, of course, Everyone's skill level is a little bit different, and this is one of the first touring cars I built up from scratch, so I'm definitely paying attention to all of the little details. Plus, I go back and I also research some other things as I'm going along, so keep that timeline in mind. Now, pretty much the kit is completely built from what you actually get inside the box. Uh, there are a couple things on here that are not included, of course, the electronics. Um, so I'll be going over that in just a little bit. So um, pretty much this is going to be step J um, through the end of the build. And uh, there wasn't a whole lot actually left to do, uh, but there was a couple of time-consuming items that I still had to build. Now, starting on uh, step J, uh, pretty much you had to uh, go ahead and put together the sway bars. Now, they do give you um, lots and lots of little pieces here for the sway bar kits. So keep that in mind. Uh, the sway bar kit actually took longer than uh, most of the steps uh, throughout this build. So um, the sway bars are, are very, very nice, and uh, they're put together with uh, very nice parts. So you can kind of see the front one uh, right inside here. Uh, there's definite lots of little grub screws that you can adjust um, to get the perfect um, you know, anti-sway. Um, so, and then on to the rear right here, uh, the same deal. So uh, very, very nice uh, sway bar kit. And of course, there's different um, uh, types of sway bars you can get directly from Team Durango. So keep that in mind too if you want to fine tune your particular DETC 410. So um, on to the other parts of the build. Um, you do have to go ahead and install the shocks, which, you know, I, I wish other uh, car manufacturers would um, have uh, shock mounts like these. And they're very nice. Uh, they go on very nice. And um, you know, they're just top quality uh, components that they use on this thing. Um, the standouts um, basically go to a ball in, they snap in, but they can be released uh, just by that two millimeter hex right there. So uh, very, very nice. And, you know, um, there's multiple holes right there that the shock can be mounted onto along with the bottom too. I went with the stock configuration. So as far as other pieces that were left on a, a Episode 3 here, installing the front bumper, which uh, has those pretty cool cutouts, where you, which you can actually leave in. I went ahead and uh, removed them. It gives you some shock absorption in there, um, you know, when you're out on the track. Um, and then the last thing is going to be the body mounts. And you'll notice here that there's a little um, tripod, so to speak, on the front end. And then, of course, the two rear ones. So um, that is the optional one from Team Durango. It is included in the kit along with all of the cool little um, drop-down swivels right here, they give you uh, three different lengths of drop-down um, and then four of each. So um, as far as if you want to run the tripod one, uh, you will have to use a different drop-down uh, for that one. So there's only four in the kit times three different drop-downs, so about 12 of them, and you can kind of pick and choose which one you want. So basically it just gives you some... Uh, uh, micro adjustment uh, from the body clips. So pretty cool here. Other thing that I did, and I went ahead and um, mounted it in because it was included in the kit as far as the screws, mounted in my LRP X20 uh, 5.5 turn motor. So that thing's going to be damn quick. So um, went ahead and mounted that in. It does include the bolts to mount your motor, which is very nice. And we'll see the motor mount right here. It's kind of a non-traditional one. It actually uses two bottom screws to hold the entire motor on. So you will see that there's no pinion mounted on there. I was a little bit confused on this one. I thought it was a 48 pitch. It's actually a 64 pitch uh, pinion that you'll need to run this particular car. So I have seen some uh, different threads on RC Tech and a few other forums that have talked about actually switching out uh, the stock uh, spur gear to a different brand and basically converting it to a point or a, a 48 pitch. So I may end up doing that. I'm not sure. I'm going to see if I can get a 64 pitch 
in my local shops, and we'll kind of go from there. So um, next thing here is going to be you know going ahead and and uh, getting in the speed control, uh, mounting all of the electronics, uh, putting in my receiver, um, and you know kind of fine tuning the rest of that stuff, getting in some. Uh, battery mounts. Um, this does not come with any Velcro strapping, so you will have to provide your own as well. So uh, pretty much this is done as far as what's included in the kit. I have uh, bodies and also wheels and tires on their way in here, so that'll be probably in the next episode of the DETC 410 build update, so please stay tuned for that. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this update. If you have any questions about the Team Durango TC 410 to this point, please post it on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over and out.